While I was discussing the architecture of TOS in a previous video, I mentioned that the default Atari hard disk drivers, the ADHI drivers, were sort of so mediocre that perhaps they were best left on the installed disk. Harsh, but fair, I think. Now, alternatives to ADHI exist both free, like ICD Pro, and paid for, like HD Driver and Peter Putnik's driver. Recently, I bought a copy of Peter's drivers, and I wanted to do a, a showcase of their capabilities and a bit of a review. Now, there are two versions of the drivers available, a hard disk driver only version at 15 euros and a second version with virtual floppy support or 20 euros. I elected to go for the full Monty. Payment was done via the WISE platform and setting that up involved taking a photo of a valid government ID, a port in my case, and sending that along with a current selfie. Bit of an arm ache, but not too bad. Now, I'd already been in touch with Peter about the drivers, so I transferred the 20 euros, emailed him to say I'd done that, and the drivers arrived by mail in probably no time, less than an hour, I would say. In the email, there were several files. After unpacking those zip files, and in the case of the 15 MB all.zip file, changing the extension from IMX to IMG, I guess that must be to make sure that the email doesn't get firewalled, we end up with the following. So what do we have here then? Oh, and by the way, hang on for a bit of an acronym laden soup of words. It's my apologies. Just hang with me. It'll be over soon. I promise. So there were two folders, AICD 101 and AICD 103. These contain the version 101 and 103 drivers and a partitioning app. And in both cases, it's the same partitioning app. The folder AIV 101 contains the version 101 driver and support for virtual floppy devices. Then there are three loose files, you might say. Uh, 15 MB all is a writable SD card image for installing the drivers when you don't have access to a floppy to write the drivers to. And that contains the 101 drivers. There's the AII101.st file, which is a floppy image that contains the 101 drivers, and that's suitable for use with the GoTech. And then finally, there's the ICD101R.tos, which is a standalone driver that can be installed into an auto folder. It's used according to Peter is in very limited situations and we certainly won't be covering that here. So there have been many mentions of the fact that there are two versions 101 and 103. What are the differences? Fairly obvious question. 101 is the original version of the drivers. Multiple partitions are supported but only one is available to the ST at a time and that's mapped to the C drive. At boot time you can choose which of your partitions you want to mount as the C drive. I like this approach for certain use cases. Imagine you use your ST in two modes, one for productivity apps and the other for gaming. And these have two fundamentally different needs for setup and configuration, I think. So for productivity, you will have an auto folder and you'll probably be loading GDOS and a VDI replacement and your desktop setup will be configured for running in a monochrome mode probably. Most likely you're gonna be running a desktop replacement like Gemini or even Mint. For gaming, we're going to be booting into low res mode and we won't be running with an auto folder because we're going to want to maximize the amount of memory available for games. I mean, especially on, say, a 5.1.12K Atari ST. You can achieve all of this on a single partition conventionally with a boot manager. But with the 101 drivers, you can put your productivity setup on C and your game setup on D and select which one you want to boot at startup. All very, very good. Now, the 1.03 drivers give you the option to have all of your partitions available as drives on the desktop at the same time. And this is pretty much what emulators like Hitari allow you to do with multiple drives. But this works on real hardware. It was a limitation of TOS that it only supported one partition per drive. And that's the reason the SD for ST and other hard drive emulators have two SD slots to allow you a C and a D drive. Right, installation. The two main ways to install the drivers are either from floppy, and there you just insert the SD card that you want to partition into slot zero of your hard disk emulator and you run the tools and drive A. Or there's an SD card solution where you use two SD cards, one in slot one to boot from and that has the tools in it and one in slot zero that is the device you're going to partition. We're going to cover both of these and we're going to start with floppy installation. And I think this is the easiest way to perform an install. So you can either mount the all101.st file as a floppy in your GoTech if you have one, or save either the AICD 101 or 103 folders to a floppy and just use it conventionally. I took the floppy disk based approach via a slightly, shall we say, circuitous route. I had to put the 103 folder under an SD image using Atari, then burn that to an SD card, boot that in my ST, and then copy the files from the ST onto the floppy. Yeah, I had the house upside down looking for my USB floppy drive, and could I find it? Good heck. I mean, I've ordered a new one, and no doubt 
I'll find the old one when the new one turns up. It seems to be always the way it happens. Right, so let's get going. Floppy inserted, SD booted, new SD card in slot zero of the SD for ST. We open up the floppy and we see three files. That's the all 103 toss which is the installer for the driver we'll use that last actually manual.txt which contains install instructions so obviously we're never going to use that and the ppp13u.prog which is peter putnik's partitioning software peter putnik picked a peck of partitioning try saying that three times first right let's start with the partitioning app after running the partitioner we get the following ui presented to us don't worry if it looks a little complex, it's actually easy to use. On the left, we have the area where we select our device to partition. The meat of the partitioning process is hosted in the middle section, where you set partition types and sizes. And then to the right is a set of buttons that allows you to nudge the partition sizes, you know, if typing is just too much of a chore for you. At the bottom right are the buttons that allow you to perform the partition, either a single partition or all partitions, and the all-important exit button. It always helps to know how to get out. Finally, and I want to point out the TOS 102 compatibility button. This partitions the disk for use in 102 and below. And what it's doing is applying the smaller maximum partition sizes. 102 and below, I think 256 megabytes was the maximum. And on 104 that we're using, it's 5112. Now, this kind of feature is going to be useful if you're creating an SD image on a later machine, like a TT, you lucky person. <laughs> and if you want it to work across all of your other ST. Right, so to get started, we select our drive. In this case, we're using a single SD card and a floppy, so its ASC ID is zero. To partition another ASC device, you can increment and decrement the ID using the buttons below. So clicking on that button refreshes the display and shows that out of the factory, our SD card came with a single 3.7 gig FAT32 partition. Right, we're gonna to need to get rid of that partition. So we're gonna set the partition type to C16 regular. And C16 allows the SD card to be mounted on a Mac or a modern PC and to allow easier file manipulation through drag and drop, etc. But FAT32 support is present for operating systems like Mint. It's not TOS compatible. If we look along the top row, it's showing us that the drive has 3810 megabytes of capacity and 3810 used and none free. While we blocked out the C partition, the UI won't update until we set a size. So here I just hit the increment button to trigger that update. Now we need to select a partitioning scheme to carve up our disk. I mean, I could have gone with seven partitions and used all of my four gig SD card. But I mean, seriously, I never had a physical hard drive on an ST with more than 50 megabytes of available space. And I think I started with 15. So I'm going to go with three 512 meg partitions. That's more than enough. So after I enter in the three partition sizes, I hit partition and in it. From the dialog that pops up when you hit that go on button, you're committing your choices and wiping all data off the disk. And that's it. Quick, wasn't it? This operates kind of like a quick format on modern computers. And in the documentation, Peter says there's no need to low level format disks anymore. I mean, we, we're not using spinning rust, are we? So I'm just clicking back on the device zero button to confirm what was written. And I'm happy with that. So let's let's exit. Right, the final part of the process is to install the driver. To do this, we run the all underbar 103.tos program. It retrieves a list of available drives. And in this case, there is only one, which is ASC zero. It prompts us for a target. I enter zero. It prompts to press I to install space to exit. I press I and it installs in a jiffy. And we're done. So let's quit to the desktop and reboot. And we get the following. Now, I'm freeze framing here. Normal boot is fast. So it says the version number of the driver is 1.03 IDI. It's copyright Peter Putnik and long file name filtering is enabled. Long file name filtering is important. When you do insert your card into a Mac or a Windows machine and you drag and drop files around, these modern operating systems have a horrible habit of just leaving rough to behind on the, on the file system. And the Mac is appalling at this. Next, in the boot order, it lists our one device and three partitions. Now, the way multiple drives are presented on the screen is by the driver creating a desktop.inf with virtual icons in it. The option to press two for medium res icons is a workaround to tell the driver to adjust for medium res mode. Apparently, at boot time, there's no way the driver can detect between low and medium res. After boot completes, there's our desktop. Three drives shown, and in the C drive is our desktop.inf. All is golden. We're done.
So the process of installing from an SD card is pretty much identical to the floppy based approach. So I'm going to cover the difference and go through the rest at a canter, possibly even a gallop actually. To install from SD card, you need to burn the 15 MB all.image file to an SD card using a tool like Belena Etcher. I inserted that into slot one of my SD for ST and the SD card that I wanted to partition into slot zero. When you boot, You'll see that the ST has been set up to have a RAM disk with the partitioner and the installer in the RAM drive. So at this point, I ejected the SD card in slot one as we're working from the RAM disk and it'll make it easier to know what device to install the driver to as there's only going to be one SD card inserted. In fact, you could almost certainly do this with only a one slot device. Actually, I think you could also boot from slot zero and repartition the boot device if you wanted to, although I haven't tested this. Running the partitioner proceeds exactly as before. And again, with the installer, we select device zero and we install. Post reboot, we see that this is version 101 of the driver and we can go with the option to select which driver is the C drive. And then once again on the desktop, we see our single drive C. There you go, told you this bit would be faster. Now, speaking of speed, in the video on upgrading from TOS 102 to 104, I benchmarked the speed difference for disk access between the two, and it was a good improvement. I want to compare the results of that final run on 104 to my current system. Now, as in all of my tests, I keep everything the same if possible and only have a single factor that is variable. And in this case, we have the same ST, the same hardware, the same configuration, the same version of TOS 104, and the only thing that's moving from that test to this test is changing from ICD Pro to Peter Putnik's drivers. There are four tests that are run. There are the short file tests where we read and write 512 to 2000 byte files. The medium file tests where the files are 10 to 15 kilobytes. And the long file tests where the, the files are 256K test. And then on top of this, there's an access time test. Now those file sizes might appear tiny by today's standards, but remember, these are yesterday's computers. For reading data, Peter's drivers are better in all cases. The medium and long file tests show a significant uplift of between 121 and 135% of the read speed of ICD Pro. However, the PP drivers underperform the ICD Pro speeds for write on small and medium file sizes, where the PP drivers only achieve 69 to 80% of the speed that ICD Pro does. But the PP drivers are 138% faster than ICD Pro for large file writes. And on the whole, this favors the PP drivers. Read is the most common use case in normal use. You know, booting, loading the desktop, opening apps, and writes are relatively rare. Reads definitely are common. So to wrap up, at the beginning of this video, I said I was doing a showcase of the capabilities and a brief review of the drivers. I've covered most of the capabilities but I haven't covered the virtual floppy support yet. I'm going to do that in a future video. I think this one's running long enough already. My thoughts. I think the drivers themselves are excellent, performant, and they're great value for money. And I'd certainly recommend buying a copy and supporting Peter in his development. I have any criticism, and it really is a small one, is I wish the floppy disk image and the SD card image contained subfolders for both the 101 and the 103 versions. I mean, I guess the 103 version is relatively new, and so not in the images, but to me, it's kind of the preferred one, and I'd like to have it available by default. Now, of course, if you install 101, you can, down the line, just run the 103 installer, and it will update in place without any need to repartition. But it's a, it's a big thumbs up for me on this driver package, and... You can do the same thing for me, of course, on this video. See what I did there. So if you've got any questions on this, please jump into the comments. I always enjoy the comments that I get, and I've had some really good discussions recently. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.